foolishness, delusion, and deception will flood in. And we are seeing that today. How do people in other churches that are being preached a false word not know that it's false? Because they don't know the word. I could tell them that Jesus was born at Six Flags and they'd be like, that's cool. Because they have no idea. They don't know. That's where the true followers of Christ come in to explain the truth, to be ready with a testimony as Scripture says, and to be ready in season and out of season. You're not just called to be ready when it gets close to, re uh, to having a revival in your church, going, okay, <laughs> Guys, we need to get ready. We got revival in two weeks. So when somebody asks for our testimony, we should probably be Johnny on the spot. When somebody asks you, what your reason is for believing in Jesus? I want to see fire from under you when you speak. Because there's a reason that you believe. And it's not because some boring person was like, God is real and you should believe in him. That didn't happen. That's not where your faith came from. Your faith came from a fire created by God underneath you. Point three, to remain in Christ, we must depend on his love. We see that in verse nine. Jesus reveals two things in the incredible measure of the love he has for us. First, the measure of Christ's love. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. I don't know where you'd be without that. I know that that would kill me if I didn't know and understand Christ's love for me. And that's a love that I also want to share that we don't have for anything else because we can't. It is a love we're incapable of experiencing as humans. Part B, the means of Christ's love. Now remain in my love. Don't let anything shake you, <coughs> seduce you, chase you, or move you out of the love, Christ, uh, the love of Christ for you. Only you can change that. And it doesn't change Christ's love for you. It just changes the way that you feel about it, the way that you see it. Because God's love is unending. It's unshakable. God still loves us even when we do crazy, stupid things. He might be, you know, I always, I always told my kids, I said, sometimes I think God just shakes his head in the corner. <sighs> he says, are you done? You done being crazy? Because I have a plan for you. And I can't use you until you're ready. Right? And that's the way that God is. You see, as long as we rebel, as long as we run away and reject him, he can't use us. But once we submit, fall on our knees, and surrender all authority to God Almighty, God says, now you're ready. Point four, to remain in Christ, we must do what he says from verse 10 and 11. Your obedience displays your love. You ever think about that? Your obedience displays your love. We were talking about Mary Jane and I this morning with Kathy about a fight that broke out at a church. Christians against Christians. That does not display love. That displays, that displays chaos. That displays a place without God. The obedience that comes from love for Christ results in a deeper relationship with Christ. And that's what I want. Anybody else in here this morning want that? Amen. That's how we get it. John 14, 21 says this, Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. I'm going to read that again just so it resonates with us. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. We have some things we have to do. If you want to find the kingdom of heaven, you don't just find it because you say, you know what, I'm sorry once and you're good and everything's over. And you can live however you want to, as recklessly as you want to. And then when your death day comes, you're like, all right, God, here I come. I think you might be disappointed. Okay? It's about when we ask Christ into our hearts as our Lord and Savior, that is the beginning of a change. That is... That is not the one and done. I mean, you know, if you got 30, 40 years beyond that, you think you're just going to invite them into your heart and live as, as recklessly as you want to? As I shared at the very opening, all of us are going to have to answer for the life we live. Jesus is going to say, you ask me, you receive me as your Lord and Savior. 
And then you went and did this, 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 and this. Why? And could you, could, you, could you imagine hearing the worst words from Jesus himself? Depart from me, for I never knew you. That breaks my heart. Because there are going to be people that hear those same words. Depart from me, for I never knew you. But we can change all that. But we have to start living for him and being on fire for him again. All of our all of our little ember fires that we have going on, that we're sitting there trying to blow on, hoping it'll catch. Gotta stop. Christ, I pray that you will light the fire under me that I started to believe in you with in the first place. And I pray that you keep it strong, keep it burning hard, long. Lord, light this fire. Let me feel you in everything that I do. Amen. And he will. B, your obedience tests your faithfulness. The bad fruit of disobedience does not come from roots that remain in Christ. Every time we get disobedient, we want to say, well, God made us that way. No, he didn't. Our disobedience is at root in unwillingness to remain in Christ and to find life in him. You know, the world keeps trying to find life in themselves. Good luck, it's not there. I hate to be the spoiler, but you're going to waste a lot of time if you're going to keep running down this rabbit hole. There's nothing there. You're going to try to find life in money? Good luck. What does the Bible say about money? You cannot serve two masters. God is either your master or he's not. Summing it all up, if you remain in Christ, you will draw on his life. Delight in his words, depend on his love, and do what he says. You will draw on the depth of his life, delight in the breadth of his words, depend on the heights of his love, and go to the lengths of his commands. You will bear much fruit. Because of who he is, not because of who we are. Because of our ability to submit full authority to God alone and allow him to work. As we place the contact information on the screen right now, for those of you watching live to be able to contact us, we want to be able to pray for you. You can have any prayer request you want, anything going on in your life, anything going on in another country, we don't care. God calls us to encourage and support each other, to love each other, to pray for each other. And so if you have a prayer request, I want you to share that with us, if you will. For the rest of us here this morning, though, if you don't know Christ, you'll never, you'll never get to, to understand the fullness of Christ. If you've never received him into your heart as your Lord and Savior, I want to invite you to come and do that now. I want to invite you to fall on your knees before Christ. If you're in a place where I've been so many times, where you, you have a hard time submitting all the authority to him, God, you, you have it all. None of this is mine. This is all yours. How may to be done with that. That's why I like that Lauren Dagel song. It's my kingdom's full. It's my kingdom's are trash. As we lift him high. Because he's God. And I'm not. And I need to submit to him. And if you're in that place this morning, and you just want to pray to get right with God, I want to invite you to come. You can come kneel on the altar and pray to him. There's nothing special about the stairs. You can pray right where you are. But this is a very humbling experience. And so if God is tugging at the strings of your heart this morning, won't you come and respond to him?